Howdy and good evening. Tonight I want to talk to you about a little known plant called Kratom, which is grown in Southeast Asia in three major countries. It's in Malaysia, Vietnam and Thailand. And people in this country or these countries actually chew the leaves as a recreational activity, similar to, to um, coffee and tea. And why am I talking about this plant? might ask because this plant has lately come into legal trouble right so this is the powder form of the plant and you can import it from Southeast Asia um, this plant is actually used by millions of people worldwide and it has several positive purposes while having very little side effects why am I talking about this then beyond to inform you it's also because the DEA Drug Enforcement Administration has filed a note of intent that is deposited today in the Federal Register. And that means that in 30 days from now, two main ingredients of Kratom called um, mitragynine and 7 hydroxy mitragynine will be added to the control, Schedule 1 controlled substances and will find itself in such nice brotherhood with LSD and heroin and other heavy drugs that have no medicinal use. And this is quite frankly pretty ridiculous. And that would make Kratom completely illegal in the United States. So that's why I'm going to talk to you about that because it's important that you're aware of what is going on and what Kratom actually is. So the main effect of Kratom, and as I said, millions of people use it worldwide and has improved their life for the better because kratom is not just some recreational drug that like coffee or tea that you drink or that you use or chew like in Southeast Asia it has actually medicinal effects so first of all uh, here are ten things that kratom does uh, to you and first one is or the very central one of kratom is that it turns out all the small little doubtful side thoughts that you have. If you meditate, you learn to have like, you have a lot of thoughts in your mind, right? If you meditate, you learn to let these thoughts go and you learn to be present in the moment. Well, Kratom helps you with that. Kratom binds to the, um, to the uh, mu opioid receptors in your brain and it actually functions as a form of depressor of, of um, side effects like small thoughts that are racing to your to your mind right all these small thoughts they get suppressed if you take Kratom and instead you focus on your main avenue of thought right so from that follow several benefits of this plant and I can talk about that because I have been using Kratom for the last year almost. I got it first uh, from a hint from uh, uh, Chris Diudis from Good Looking Loser and uh, it has not failed uh, me in any point, right? So first of all it removes social anxiety, right? So Kratom um, if it suppresses all the doubtful thoughts in your mind and you kind of zone in and you become more focused and become more sociable. So um, all the negative thoughts, all the worries are gone. So now you feel like happy and happy to talk to people, right? So that's the first thing. Create and remove social anxiety. Right? So you can talk to people and it's entirely cool and there's no problem with it. Second, Kratom allows sexual enhancement or um, basically um, it acts as an aphrodisiac and uh, enables you to, to last with your sexuality for longer. Um, and at least that is reported. I have never used it for sex myself. But people have said that it helps them 
and um, it's yeah, it's a, it's a nicer orgasm. Um, it's a longer erection. It's a longer stimulant for your libido, and um, that's just another beneficial side effect, right? Um, another effect is the stimulation of focus and the clarity of mind. As I said before, you can really focus on your main thought, what you really want to do, and you can just let go of all these doubtful side thoughts that kind of interfere with your main direction of focus. And basically, that is very similar to meditation. It may, you may use it together with meditation, that may even help you, but um, it's, it uh, basically uses itself already brings you clarity of mind. So it helps you to focus, and I know a lot of people myself included, that are able to finish their project much more easily, right? Coming back, I work in sales right now, and with Kratom, it's so much easier to talk to people and to really focus on, on talking to people and selling um, my product to people than without, right? Because you really you have a very easy point zoning in on the moment. Number four, um, your mood improves. As soon as you take Kratom, it takes like around like 30 minutes for the effects to kick in, you feel like a euphoric happiness. It's just a just a nice happiness you can, you can lean back and, and really enjoy. But you're not zoned out like with weed or something like that. You are just basically able to function in a much happier state of mind. Right? So um, it's basically actually really a kind of warmth that spreads through your body. And it makes things so nice and so much easier, and it makes you really happy, whatever you do. Um, in fact, if you followed me, I often have the morning uh, things I'm grateful for. Sometimes I write Kratom in there because Kratom allows me also to be grateful for what I have. So Kratom is a very, is a very nice, is a very nice um, substance, right? So mood improvement. And now we go to the real clinical applications, right? So medicinal value uh, has never been officially tested, but there are a lot of people that report very positive effects. First of all, you can combat depression. If you have like a certain certain amount of warmth and happiness in your mind, you raise your default state um, from like bleakness, non-energy to do anything, you get a little happier already, right? So you have a better baseline from which to operate. So people use it to battle depression. And then people also use it, and it's very important, as a pain reliever. As a, some people suffer from chronic pain, and they use Kratom as a pain reliever. They don't need to use Oxycontin or anything of that. No heavy drug uh, pharma, pharmaceutical products that make you addicted themselves. No, you can use Kratom and the pain goes away, or at least goes down to a manageable level so that they can have their daily lives. Um, and number seven, it helps people from opiate withdrawal. So people that are addicted to heroin, for example, um, they can replace heroin with Kratom and get rid of their heroin addiction. And now you might say, oh, well, but now they're addicted to Kratom. But no. You're not really you're not really getting so easily addicted to kratom, um, and it's much easier to get off. Kratom is a much milder drug, if you wish, uh, compared to heroin, right? So people report that they have an easier way of getting off heroin. On physiological side, kratom helps you with diarrhea. So if people suffer from diarrhea. Kratom has a constipating function, so you can use it to battle diarrhea, which is a really, um, really benefit to some people, and it also helps you to sleep. So, basically, normally if you take Kratom, after like 30 minutes, the effect kick in, you feel happiness. If you take Kratom in a little bit higher dose, you feel more sleepy, and you have an easier way of sleeping. So you can use Kratom as a method to battle sleeplessness. 
And 10, there are more general health effects that Kratom has. For example, um, it has reported to reduce, ne reduce neuron damage by acting as an antioxidant. So after stroke, some people may use it to help uh, to help repair the neuron damage that they have, right? In a stroke, neurons die off because parts of the brain don't get enough uh, blood, so they don't get enough oxygen, and so these regions, uh, neurons in those regions die, right? So after a stroke, um, you want to prevent further neuron damage. That you can do with Kratom. And um, it lowers your blood pressure and also contains catechin, which actually uh, mimics insulin and thus may control blood sugar levels and uh, it increases energy metabolism overall that's another effect of kratom so you can actually lose lose weight and lose fat much faster right so those are 10 effects that kratom has right um kratom uh removes social anxiety uh leads to sexual enhancement stimulates your focus and your clarity of mind, it improves your mood and your peace of mind, it battles depression, it uh, um, battles, it, it's used as a pain reliever, it helps people to get off opiates, and um, it's, uh, it's, it helps people with um, bowel movements, it, it counteracts diarrhea, uh, it helps people sleep, and it has an overall positive effect on various different uh, health uh, concerns in our body, right? So, there are some negative side effects, but, so it's like um, tachycardia, like heart arrhythmia, or um, like, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, like the arousedness, or like, you, like, like nervousness, um, higher blood pressure, but those result when people massively overdose the drug. So basically, um, there's this, if, if you take a lot of Kratom, much more than the 3 to 4 gram of Kratom you normally take, then you can have serious problems. But, I mean, you know, if you eat a whole cup of salt, you feel like crab afterwards. If you drink 2 or 3 liters of distilled water, right or even water um, you may actually feel really really bad um, and so every drug every substance that we eat we can overeat and have bad effects hell I mean after Thanksgiving how many people report like like health problems right so if you take Kratom in in normal doses the health the negative side effects are very little right I know it from my own experience I know it from friends there are entire discussion boards to go to Kratom and people discuss and rarely are side effects mentioned at all, right? So they are there, but like every drug, if you overdose it, if you become, um, if you become um, ins insensible with the use, then you suffer negative consequences. As such, as a drug itself, not a big problem. And that is actually, that is actually um, reported between 2010 and 2015, the uh, U.S. poison centers received like a number of 660 exposure record exposure reports. Right, so many people called or start or dropped by that uh, had taken kratom in any form, and they were feeling uh, really negative effects. Right, so they went to the U.S. poison centers, and now of six of six, we're talking about 660 cases in five years. Um, if you look at, a, at, at the um, at the official statistics, um, like there are almost two millions of exposure reports per year um, of any drug every anywhere, right? The various different drugs people take or or substance people take, um, six hundred sixty cases, or per year one hundred twenty cases, something like that, is a real low number. But let's look at that number. So of those 660, 26.2% that reported, there was no effect coming afterward, right? So it was like a, it was like a, a purely worry, but there was no health effect. 24.5% of those exposures were minor and resolved with minimal effort. 
like 41.7% were moderate exposures, they required some form of treatment, and 7.4% were major, major life-threatening, right? That's 49 exposures in five years. Um, and so some people have died after using Kratom, but almost all of these cases, people had other drugs in their systems as well. So it seems very overblown, the concern of the DEA. Um, and nevertheless, they are putting now um, the two major parts of Kratom as a, uh, as a Schedule I controlled substance, which, may, which means Kratom will be as illegal as heroin and LSD in the United States starting at the beginning of October. And that is really a very, very bad news for people that require Kratom, that rely on Kratom for, as I said, for uh, not only as a recreational drug, but also to help them with opiate withdrawal, to help them manage chronic pain, right? To manage, um, to manage, um, uh, you know, sleep, physiolog physiology, right? Anti-diarrhea, um, and, um, you know, that rely on it as a general health stimulant, right? But um, people that are, that are trying to get off drugs or trying to use Kratom as a, a pain management, they are really screwed because now they rely on, on hardened drug from the pharmaceutical industry and non-coincidentally who may profit from a Kratom ban those companies that sell you painkillers, prescription painkillers, that your insurance pays for, and that the drug companies charge exorbitant fees for. Those are the winners of a ban. Not saying that it has anything to do with each other, but something to think about. But right now, uh, we're trying to uh, prevent metragenin and hydroxymetragenin becoming a scheduled like controlled substance and for that I'll, I'll add some links at the bottom of this video and you can click on them so the American Kratom Association has uh, has an updated has updated resources you know um, what people can do calls to their local congressmen or senators donating time and money uh, or or spreading the word about Kratom, anything like that, will help. And just one additional word to the, um, to the best part about Kratom is actually, um, I, I talked before about dosages, right? And, and, um, and uh, like the way uh, that you use to self-medicate and so on and so forth. Uh, you can experiment with Kratom. It's, it has no real addictive potential because there are different strains of Kratom that all work in a slightly different way on your mind. So you can use one strain on Monday, another strain on Tuesday, another on Wednesday, and so on and so forth. In effect, only using one strain once a week. So your addictive potential um, uh, reduced reduced um, changes in tolerance and all that can lead to addiction are basically non-existent, right? So, kratom in that way is very safe, also because you don't, you don't, you're not in danger of becoming addicted to it or anything like that, right? That's also a big benefit of kratom. But coming back to the to the ban, yeah, as I said before, um, check the American Kratom Association, uh, spread the word. It helps people manage their pain. It helps people manage their drug withdrawal, and um, it is uh, it is a recreational drug that helps a lot of people to become um, to lose their anxiety talking to other people and to focus on doing their doing their job. And that all would vanish if kratom would be a Schedule One controlled substance. They want to have it like for two years. The DA was love, wants wants to have a temporary ban on Kratom, but who knows what, what happens in two years, right? Uh, it's very difficult to do research on this con Schedule 1 controlled substance next to impossible. So, uh, uh, the may just be that Kratom will just die a slow death, 
like what happens after those two years, they keep it on schedule one if nobody does anything, right? So very important, help us, help us get the word out, uh, inform yourself about Kratom, help us with donations to the American Kratom Association or help us with maybe calling your local congressman and so on and so forth. I believe you'll find more on the American Kratom Association uh, page and I included some links there so you can inform yourself. But the situation here is really dire. Um, I have come to love this substance a lot and um, I hope we can still prevent it. And um, I'd be happy if you can give it a consideration or if you can even even help. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have about Kratom. And I wish you a very happy and good night. Goodbye.